During all the madness of the GTX 1080 benchmarks, Nvidia did something unexpected and released all the details regarding the upcoming 1070, or at least the details we weren't yet privy to, such as the core configuration. Sadly, I don't have a card yet, and right now I've no idea when I'll be getting my hands on one, but I'm sure another extreme benchmark session won't be far away. So on to the 1070 specifications. As expected, this upcoming graphics card features a cut down GP104 GPU, featuring 1920 CUDA cores, down from 2560 on the GTX 1080, along with 120 TMUs and 64 ROPs. Boost clock speeds have also been decreased, down to 1600 MHz from 1733 MHz. The memory system sees 8GB of standard GDDR5 connected through the same 256-bit bus. The raw memory frequency is 2000MHz, resulting in 8GB per second transfer speed for a memory bandwidth of 256GB per second. This is actually still very fast as the GTX 980 features a similar memory subsystem with a slightly slower clocked memory, resulting in 13% less memory bandwidth. Because the GTX 1070 is essentially just a cut down version of the 1080, it features the same physical die, meaning it still measured 314mm squared and comprises of 7.2 billion transistors. However, because there are less enabled CUDA cores, the TDP has been lowered to 150 watts, which is 17% lower than the 1080. Now for the good stuff. Nvidia claims that the 1070 will slightly outperform the GeForce GTX Titan X. This is important as the GTX 1070 will become available on June the 10th for $450 as a Founders Edition card, with board partners set to release customised designs at a lower MSRP of $380 a few weeks later. This is pretty bloody awesome because Nvidia is suggesting $1000 GPU performance, or at least $650 if you look at the more realistic 980 Ti, for as little as $380 in a few weeks time. It actually isn't very hard to accurately determine the GTX 1070's performance now that we have the 1080 results, and more crucially, know the exact specs of the 1070. There are just 25% less cores, TMUs and ROPs, along with a 6% reduction in operating frequency, just 3% if you compare the boost clocks. Therefore, you can safely assume that the GTX 1070 will be at the most around 25-30% to slower than the 1080. One would think it's almost impossible for it to be much slower than that. Realistically, I'd guess the average margin across our 21 game sample will end up being around 20%. However, I've got to reiterate that I'm just guessing here. Given we found on average that the GTX 1080 was 23% faster than the Titan X, I feel it's going to be very likely that the Titan X and 1070 will trade blows. I don't think one will be outright faster than the other. Interestingly, if we deduct 20% from the 1080's result in Far Cry Primal, a game that was in line with the 21 game average, we see that the 1070 matches the Titan X and GTX 980 Ti exactly. Again, I can't stress enough that this is a made up result by me, so the real result could be different. It's an educated guess to show you guys where I think the 1070 will land. I really hope this is where the 1070 will end up, as that kind of performance will make the board partner cards a really good buy at $380. If the overclocking headroom is as good as I'm expecting, it will mean the 1070 might be able to achieve 1080-like performance. It would have been nice to see the same $330 MSRP that accompanied the GTX 970, but if it all goes well, that extra $50 shouldn't be too hard to justify. Well, that's enough speculation from me. I hope this was interesting for all you guys asking for my take on the 1070's performance. If you've got any questions or perhaps a sample card you want to send me, let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time.